And then there is sitting Governor Tom Corbett right now. And this is a big story in Pennsylvania. It's not a big national story. And this is a real problem. Tom Corbett uh, is currently on the Board of Trustees. He's the he Pennsylvania the governor. Yes, he is the former state's attorney general of the state of Pennsylvania. Over the course of two years, he had the information about Jerry Sandusky, and based on who you believe, he either assigned one person to the case, or his office responds and says, that's an outrage. We've actually assigned, we actually assigned two people to the case. And over two years, they basically did nothing. It was, it's called in Pennsylvania the slow walking indictment. And the reason why that a lot of people, including entities like ESPN, which is hardly democratic, democracy now. Why th they have um, inferred that why he did this was that he was in the process of raising a lot of money for his gubernatorial run from Penn State alums and from the board of Jerry Sandusky's charity, Second Mile. He held fundraisers without alerting Second Mile that Jerry Sandusky was under investigation at the head of the board of directors of this incredibly large child charity service called Second Mile. And the idea that Tom Corbett has not had... The idea that Tom Corbett has not had to answer for these questions is very problematic to a lot of people in Pennsylvania. Uh, speaking to PAMatters.com earlier this month, uh, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett defended himself against accusations that the three-year investigation should have been opened and concluded earlier. Uh, Corbett launched the criminal investigation against Sandusky, as you said, Dave, while he was Attorney General of Pennsylvania. There has been criticism in the past of why we didn't charge, why I didn't charge right after the very first uh, report, and that would be the young man from Clinton County. Um, and I think it's clear now, and especially if you talk to victim advocates and, and people that have done this kind of work, that very hard in a one-on-one -on -one case, it, but when you present a series of uh, victims uh, and the consistency in uh, the testimony, not absolute consistency, but consistency in demonstrating the, the modus operandi, for want of a better uh, term, of Mr. Uh, um, Sandusky. Sandusky, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to blot the name out. I don't blame you. I think uh, a lot of we all are. That, yeah. that this investigation was conducted in order to get somebody off the street, not to lose the investigation, and we were successful. That was Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett. Dave Zirin, your response? Well, my, my response is that he needs to explain the $650,000, and once again, I get that number from ESPN, that he raised from the board of directors of Jerry Sandusky's foundation, Second Mile, while he was running for governor. My response is to ask why more investigators weren't put on this incredibly important case. It's so hegemonic culturally in this section of Pennsylvania, so hegemonic um, financially, so hegemonic um, emotionally, culturally, and the fact that it really looks like Tom Corbett did not want to really go there, even if it meant uh, the fact that more children could be victimized over the course of his investigation. What's most problematic to me, Amy, is that Tom Corbett played a huge role in getting Louis Free to do this investigation. He vouched for Louis Free. He considers Louis Free a friend. And the idea that Tom Corbett has not had to answer himself under subpoena for why he did what he did, I mean, it's one of those things where, look who we're attacking right now. We're attacking 18-year-old uh, scholarship athletes athletes and making them pay the price when people in power have not really had to be affected or afflicted by the horrible crimes that took place in Happy Valley. Dave Zirin, explain the significance of the Second Mile Foundation uh, and the significance of Sandusky having, Sandusky having to leave Penn State but giving the rights to the locker room. No, I, I'm glad you mentioned that and this, this has to be a part of the story because Second Mile started as a small children's charity for underprivileged children that was started by Jerry Sandusky. He wrote a book about why this charity was going to become his life's work after he left football. The book, disturbingly enough, uh, was self-published, and it's called Touched. Uh, the Jerry Sandusky story, and people have wondered whether that was part of his own j just horrible uh, approach to, to children, is why he called it, called it touched. Uh, Jerry Sandusky was somebody who then took this children's charity, Second Mile, and turned it into something through his connections at Penn State that was this incredibly powerful entity, this incredibly powerful nonprofit 
that, that had its tentacles reach throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And it also looks like it was the place where Jerry Sandusky chose uh, his victims on the basis of how vulnerable they were, on the basis of how poor their economic situation was, on the basis of them not having other adults in their lives who would listen to them. I mean, it's about, I mean, reading through the court testimony as Sandusky's trial took place and he was convicted on 45 of 48 counts, 700 years behind bars, um, it, it couldn't have been more uh, diabolical and it couldn't have been more disturbing about how these children uh, were exploited over over the course of so many years. And Second Mile was also something that was supported greatly by Penn State University, and it looks to be very much that it was a condition of, Sand of keeping what Sandusky was doing quiet, was making sure that the charity was funded and making sure it would kind of just be kept quiet and all go away for the purposes of protecting the brand. I mean, this is banality of evil writ large. I mean, you have this horrible monster at the center of it in Jerry Sandusky, and then you have layers and layers and layers of people in power who are scared about what his scandal would do to them, even if the collateral damage was small children. And it's this horror show why a lot of people, I think, are celebrating what the NCAA did. But I would turn back once again to the Naomi Klein concept of the shock doctrine, and really we should be worried about the kind of power that the NCAA is assuming in what really should be a criminal and civil manner.